I turn my sheet music up and I'm puffing my chest. I'm getting red in the face. You can call me upset. It's not your fault that they hover. I mean, no disrespect. It's not right to be hellish. I still get jealous. I watched The Voice for like 10 hours last night, so now that song is stuck in my head. What up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skittin' back at it again. Okay, look, like these were like super cute little like front puff tails, and now with these damn headphones, they're all messed up. Auntie who's in? Hope you guys are doing wonderful. Um, I don't know what day this is gonna come out, but whatever day this is, I hope it's going well for you. Um, there's been a lot of craziness going on in, you know, Minneapolis, LA, even here in Vegas, New York, um, all kinds of stuff. And um, I'm choosing personally not to speak on it, um, not because I don't have strong feelings about it or I don't have strong convictions about it, um, but because I don't feel like blocking a bunch of you guys on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. So <laughs> I'm just gonna, you know, keep it friendly, keep it fresh, okay? Uh, the OGs know how I feel about um, hashtag Black Lives Matter and all of that, hashtag Black Lives Matter. I thought it would be fun to kind of do some little history things, you know, kind of get away from the memes and stuff. But don't worry, I still have more SCP content coming out, so don't y'all worry your pretty little heads, okay? Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Travis got this little pointer thing. I don't think I'm very good at it. Come on, get over here. Three, two, one, play. Ah, oh, shit, I fucked it up. Three, two, wait, I turned it off. <laughs> Three, two, one, play. Oh, with that Netflix. R slash ask Reddit by Reddit and chill. What's a cool history fact? When Socrates was on trial, he was so annoying during his defense that he convinced several of the jurors who had voted not guilty during the finding vote to vote for the death penalty during the sentencing vote. He's innocent, but he's so irritating. Kill him anyway. Basically, oh man, it's yeah. even better than that. After he was voted guilty, the prosecution asked for the death penalty. Athenian law permitted the defense to offer a counter sentence. With the jurors able to pick between the two, Socrates' counter sentence was a public commendation and a house. I think the house. Not 100% sure. The jury chose death. Ha! Lincoln pardoned he someone died. for attempted bestiality. That just sounds like someone couldn't get hard for a zebra and he told them it was fine and they should try again in half an hour. Why specifically a zebra? It's a zebra, but. Uh, what did what did Trevor Noah say? We don't have them, so we don't get to decide what they're called, right? But anyway, why specifically a zebra? That don't make no sense. The shortest war in history was the Anglo-Zanzibar War of 1896. It lasted 38 minutes. How did it happen? When Beethoven was challenged to an- Y'all not finna tell us how it happened? duel by one of his rivals Stibelt. Beethoven took a piece of Stibelt's music, turned it upside down, played it and then improvised on that theme for over an hour. Oh, Stibelt okay. simply left halfway through and never returned to Vienna where the duel took place. Stibelt played first. The piece Beethoven turned upside down was the one Stibelt had just finished playing. The disrespect. James Madison wrote a series of letters for President George Washington and the Congress to each other. There were four letters in total. And neither party knew that it was just Madison writing the letters to himself and reading it aloud to the other party. He was wow. too embarrassed to say anything. Why? Sounds like a real John Barron move. Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian II, reigned 1564-1576, died of consuming overly large amounts of peaches and cherries and chilled white wine. Sounds, sounds like, like a, a way delicious to way to go. Yeah, that sounds tasty. Napoleon was once attacked by a horde of bunnies. Please continue. Belize is the only country in Central America with English as a primary language due to coral reefs and pirates. 
I'm just gonna go back to the bunny thing real quick. Sorry, I'm getting used to this fucking clicker thing in my hand. We got this little Bluetooth pointer thing and it's a little inexact for my taste. Now, I'm getting damn tired of us asking y'all to continue shit and y'all don't fucking continue shit. What is going on with Napoleon and the bunnies? What is happening? Why? Why was he attacked by the bunnies? What did he do to the bunnies? I need to know, guys. I need to know. Belize is the only country in Central America with English as a primary language due to coral reefs and pirates. I'm sorry what? The reefs have to do with anything. Pirates once captured Julius Caesar and tried to hold him for ransom. Yes, when they told true. him how much the bounty would be he laughed and their faces then demanded they increase the ransom cost he was worth more than that what a power move. Edit. Yep. Can't believe I forgot one of my favorite history facts. The Greek philosopher Empedocles died by jumping into Mount Etna. He was either attempting to become an immortal god or trying to convince his followers he was one. By the way, he didn't come back. What a massive spoon. That oh, it gets better. Caesar made these guys love him. He entertained them. Played games with them. Told stories. Read poems and plays. And assured them he'd crucify every single one of them once he was free. So, yeah. once his ransom had been paid, he got some soldiers and immediately made good on his promise to crucify them all. And also yeah. retrieved his ransom. At least five times in Earth's history the entire planet's animals life and plants were reduced by 90% 70% or more. Edit. Ooh. Lots died. Yeah it's pretty incredible. <laughs> Lots died. Also, you being alive means there is an unbroken chain. All the way back to the first life form. That leads to you. Something survived every predator. Every natural disaster. Every extinction level event. Every plague. Every war. Every depression. ETC. All the way down to you. Be grateful for it. And try to make all that struggle worth something. Co I like that. I don't know. That just... What a positive way to think about, like, why you exist. Like, why do I exist? Well, I don't know why you exist, but I do know that a lot of things happened in the universe to make it so that you're here. So, congratulations and welcome. Colon. Edit. Your edit does make yours more accurate. At least one of the events, though, was 90% or more. The Great Dying. I think there was one other that was close but not quite 90%. And most of the others were close to the 70% you changed it to. I think there were five great extinction events, but my memory is really rusty on this topic. Tiffany. Gary, there's one in the Nibble Engine Lead, which was written around the year 1200, and Chad are medieval names. There's something called the Tiffany problem among fantasy historical wow. writers. In that they can't name a character something like Tiffany even though it's a medieval name because readers wouldn't believe it. Right! After the discovery of the New World, the Pope mediated a dispute between Portugal and Spain to renegotiate a previous treaty that gave Portugal exclusive rights to trade and colonization below the Canaries. With the goal of making a vertical line instead and having this New World fall under Spain's sphere. Amid the negotiation. The Portuguese randomly asked that the line be moved west by a few thousand miles or so. This only gave Portugal more sea while potentially giving Spain land in the Pacific. So they accepted. A few years later, Brazil was discovered. With its gold mines. Oh, tropical wow. wood and cash crop climate. Placed under Portuguese rule by that line shift. Oh, According wow. to the code of canon law. Any newly discovered territory fell under the jurisdiction of the diocese whence the expedition left. Therefore the bishop of the diocese of Orlando is also the bishop of the moon. Bitch. The Catherine wheel firework is named after the execution method known as death by breaking on the wheel which was used during the medieval and early modern periods. The phone would be tied to a large wheel and the executioner would break his bones with a staff before giving the death blow to the chest. The Catherine Wheel also inspired the stupid ducking Bonuel skeletons in Dark Souls. Against whom fighting is an even worse form of torture than the original wheel yeah, itself. Yeah, they, they fucking suck. Charles II of England hid from the Parliament's army up an oak tree and now a lot of pubs in England are called the Royal Oak in commemoration to this. 
He's also stupid. responsible for appointing Henry Morgan to be the Lieutenant Governor of Jamaica. Without Charles I.I. we wouldn't have had Captain Morgan run. Hey, thank Hitler, you, Cap Charles. Stalin, and Mussolini were all nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize but never won. How the duck. In 1864, two ships shipwrecked on the desolate Auckland Island. 300 miles south of New Zealand. They were unaware of each other's existence. Due to massive differences in leadership. From one ship. All survived. And from the other. Almost none. The Grafton wow. was shipwrecked on the 3rd of January 1864. Her castaway crew waited a year for a ship to come to their rescue. Which. It soon became apparent. Would not come. Six months later. Three men decided to set out in a dinghy and managed to cross a distance of 450 kilometers, 280 mi, to Stewart Island. 30 kilometers, 20 mi, south of New Zealand's South Island. They then funded a rescue mission to pick up their remaining companions. The crew spent a total of 18 months on the sub-Antarctic island. Oh and despite God. their ordeal, all survived. N Wikipedia or Glink, ship. The in the cold struck the Auckland Islands at 2 a.m. on the 11th of May 1864. Broke up and was totally destroyed in a short amount of time. Jeez. The in the cold crew, right from the time of the shipwreck, was dominated by an ethos of every man for himself. Individual crewmen, such as the cook, were abandoned to die just a few hundred yards from the rest of the group. Wow. Food wasn't shared equitably. Violence was commonplace. And the captain was primarily interested in his own survival. Eventually, wow. when just three of the crew remained alive, they had the good luck of being spotted by a ship which had sailed in to repair a leak. It's very interesting and well worth a read. That's fucking crazy. This is incredible considering that they were only about 10 miles apart, as the crow flies. The article does state that the infighting and crappy leadership of the Invercold crew was partly due to having almost no resources and food, compared to the Grafton. Right. Uh, every time I see the phrase, as the crow flies, I just remember when, like, Lemony Snicket waxed poetic about that phrase, and I don't remember which one of the books from the series of unfortunate events, but that's what I think of every time I see, as the crow flies. Roman Emperor Caracalla once visited Alexandria. One night he went to a theater show and the actors made fun of him during the show. That it was like just part of the program. He wasn't amused about this so he ordered the entire population of the city, one of the biggest cities I'm the Empire, to be executed for the mistake of a couple actors. Oh God. Must have been a funny guy. Oh he also murdered his brother in front of his mother. Did oh, okay. everyone die or did they just tell him it happened? Roman Emperor Jesus. Titus had the Colosseum flooded in order to reenact a naval battle. Romans also invented arrows meant to decapitate ostriches. Arrows meant to decapitate ostriches. Specifically. When Montana was a part of Idaho Territory with Wyoming, the Abraham Lincoln sent Sidney Edgerton to become the first territorial judge in 1863. On his way to Lewiston, the territorial capital, he was forced to spend the winter the in the gold rush boom town of Bannock, Montana. Here he saw gangs of highwaymen stealing from and murdering miners. Most notable being the Plummer Gang of the Innocents. Allegedly led by Sheriff Henry Plummer. During wow. the winter. Fed up with the thieves and lack of law enforcement. Edgerton and other community members banded together to form the Montana Vigilantes. On the night the 10th of January. 1864. They stormed Plummer's home in the middle of a blizzard. Dragged oh him God. out of bed and hung him from hastily constructed gallows next to two of his deputies. Oh Over wow. the next few weeks. 20 of Plummer's men were summarily arrested and executed by the Montana vigilantes. Edgerton. Instead of going. He said I'm fucking tired of this shit bro. Y'all not finna do this while I'm here. Not on my watch bitch. Not in front of my salad. To Lewiston. Went back to Washington DC with $2,500 in gold nuggets and said Idaho territory <laughs> is too large to govern. He spent that gold lobbying to split up the territory. And when the time came to draw the map, Edgerton drew the Montana-Idaho border roughly 130 miles to the west of the agreed border, the Continental Divide, stealing a massive resource abundant region for Montana. So wow. that's why the Montana-Idaho border doesn't follow the Continental Divide. 
Montana history is sometimes quite interesting when you get into it. Especially when you consider that the state was built upon people taking the law into their own hands. So interesting because Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho are all states that I consider not interesting at all. So it's... I think it's fun that they have something good about like at least their history because like honey you will never catch me in any of those states unless there's like some kind of zombie apocalypse like uh-uh no way boring no offense to y'all those of y'all that live there get out while you can prostitutes in ancient Greece would put their prices on the bottom of their sandals so that they could advertise their services while giving them that's Wait, good marketing how would people see the prices yes. I Damn. don't know if it's history or myth but supposedly at some event between the polis in ancient Greece an old man was looking for a place to sit. It was crowded and no one offered him their seat so he kept looking. When he got to the area where the Spartans were all of them stood up and offered him their seat. He turned back to the others and said only in Sparta it pays off to grow old. Apparently Spartans had a huge respect for old people. They thought if you've fought life long enough to grow old. You must be one tough SOB. Also Makes fun sense. fact about Spartans. There were two main ways to earn a grave in Sparta. Dying during military service or, surprisingly, dying during childbirth. Right. Both were considered equally honorable. Cause they TBH felt like, I find Sparta really too. interesting cause of stuff like that. They were some tough dunts. The yeah. Battle of Tessel remains the only in- all right, y'all, I'm going to end this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you know of any fun, interesting facts, oh my God, the stupid thing. If you know of any fun um, and interesting history facts, make sure you put them in the comments down below because I do be reading those and I do love me some fun history facts. So let me know. Auntie Hoosin, peace out, hope it's getting lit.